Live and we're live from Keeler Gardens. For our regular Saturday, what's in bloom? So as you can see in the background, everything is in bloom right now. <laughs> we're gonna focus on a couple things that we haven't talked about before because we could have like a six hour long video if we talked about every single thing that was in bloom today. But first, while we're waiting for people to arrive. Did you get a notification that Keeler Gardens was live? Thank you for following us. Tell your friends to follow us and like us when we're live. Because Keeler Gardens is on the north side of Chicago on Keeler Avenue, just north of Addison. We're a 501c3 nonprofit charity here for connection to nature. Our goal is to connect people with nature in a myriad of ways. You let us know who you are and, and you know where you stand right now, and we'll find a way. I stand on Keeler Avenue. We'll find a way well, to get you connected. The apron. To now I'm. These What's in Bloom series, I'm not even listening to what Ed is saying. <laughs> These What's in Bloom series on Saturdays that we do um, is to really show you what the space looks like. We would probably be do these, doing these as tours uh, on a weekly or bi weekly basis if um, we were able to have programs on site. However, because we are on a public sidewalk, you can come and view this front space anytime you like. All right? Even if you have to get on a plane. <laughs> so. Maybe not today, but soon. Just in case you're new, my name's Gina. That's Ed behind the camera. I'm waving. He's waving. And this is our What's in Bloom tour that we do for a live video on Saturdays. May 9th. May 9th. You I... can find most of these things photographed and posted to Instagram. We do a periodic What's in Bloom series there where we um, we'll post six or eight videos. Cool. We have a bunch of videos that I'm going to put up today for you. Okay. So What's in Bloom? So what's in Look okay. at this beautiful blue flower. And look at its height. So, uh, what will Can probably... you come down so we can get a reference <laughs> uh, point of its height? Can you see my, my, it's, it's about, I don't know, a foot and a half off the ground. And it's all about the flowers. What'll happen is once these flowers start to fade, we'll cut these stems back pretty hard and it'll be like sort of a nice ground cover. So, this is the woodland phlox. In the, um, the woodland phlox is a native. Uh, when we were building our pollinator habitat, the native uh, species plants, the true native wasn't available. So we uh, looked into how valuable this cultivar was and we believe that it has the same benefits that the native species does. So that is our uh, woodland phlox. Now um, if Ed stands up and steps back, what I wanted to show you is that there's another patch of it there and there's a little bit behind there. There's a little bit over there that you can't really see, but there's other blue flowering plants in the garden. So this, uh, this Can't hear you. There are other blue flowering plants right now. Our bluebells and um, the other phlox, the moss phlox, and the grape hyacinth. So the blue sort of jumps through the garden. It's a really way to flow. Another thing in bloom right in this area is our barberry. Many people don't realize this. Barberry is uh, valued for its beautiful foliage. This is uh, relative of rose glow. I'm not sure of the exact cultivar. Um, but there's yellow versions of Barberry, and there are green. And we have this beautiful red one, and we have it in a couple different places. But this what, one we definitely have to get pictures up. I don't think the video does it justice of these tiny. I do have some little, some images I'll post. There's already one of the very first bloom that happened a couple days for, ago. Uh, hold it still for a moment or two. Here. And then um, I got a branch, and I'll post that. Um, yeah, I might have posted that yesterday. Beautiful. So basically, on, on the underside of every one of these sort of waterfall type branches are these clusters of these little yellow flowers that are, are, are tinged in red. I mean, it's really stunning when you look up close. And I'm not sure if they're open enough yet or if it's warm enough. But these actually have a wonderful scent. So they might be in bloom next Saturday. Uh, they might, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, I can sort of smell it. But when, not they're, quite there yet. when they're all open and it's warm enough, it's been a little cool. So um, then, the, then you just put your head in there. But this is called barberry because it's got barbs. Uh, it's got little spindly guys, almost like thorns on it. So you do have to be careful when you're working with this plant. So it's not named after Barbara. Got it. There, that would be Ed trying to make a joke. And again, I apologize. So we'll do a brief, just, you know, overview of the garden. Because we have focused on many of these blooms before. Could you turn and face the camera as you're talking so we can Sorry. hear you? That's great. You can't hear me at all. No. Okay, so uh, again, just a brief uh, view from afar of the lovely stand of tulips. 
and we're going to come through. Um, yeah, I guess we'll go this way because this is the way the sun is. That's going to pass me over and put focus this way. Look at this stand of columbine. I believe these are seeds from our little lanterns cultivar that we have here on this on site we had like one or two little sections of it and it just seeded everywhere so these may or may not be exactly like little lanterns because oftentimes cultivars when they see they revert back to their natural hmm. so um Didn't know that. yeah the, the genetics you know if you're not um choosing the seeds genetically and testing them you don't know for sure what they're going to offer hmm. so um but you can see how short these guys are and that's why i'm referencing them like little lanterns and so there's a, a few there and there's a couple uh, right and left in front of us but that actually all seeded itself we didn't actually plant those with that said every time this happens and we have excess if you see something you like you can split it and you can have it all right <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and uh you all will be the first to see the first bloom on our apple tree here our oh apple. i didn't even see that we have one little pink right there. I don't know if you can see that. I'll take a picture of it. There, will, there may be more uh, next weekend. Hopefully. All right. I want apples. Uh, and then we'll come around this way. Ed will uh, bend down here and we'll point out the lamium. See this beautiful yellow flower? This is a ground cover. Now on this one, it is wonderful in an area when you've got all this covering the ground and you've got these wonderful little yellow flowers. But this guy really is quite um, hardy. He, he just goes and goes and goes and goes. So I would only recommend this for space that you want it to cover completely. All right, we will keep going through the beautiful garden, uh, past the violets and more tulips. Past what, sorry? Uh, violets, uh -huh. the little purple guys. I did do have a picture of those posted on, on Instagram. And tulips. And tulips. Great. I'm sorry, I am walking away. I will turn my head. We see, notice here, we have that same woodland phlox. Notice how it's not blooming yet because it gets so much shade. It just takes a little longer to, to get up to speed. All right? We're coming this way and we're coming this way because over here, there's a few more things in bloom. Look at this wonderful bleeding heart. Can you see that? It's not fully open yet. There's another one down further that is fully open. And then this is the... Um, there's one over. Well, the, oh, the and we have more, more of like the heart. You. There we go. Why it's called bleeding heart? Yeah. And then this is another columbine. You can see the color. This one's a little pinker. This also is not a species one. This one is um, gosh, I don't even know the cultivar name because it was donated to us. But uh, we'll have the species ones. They'll come up soon because they're so much bigger and taller. They take a little longer to bloom. So yeah, we have more bleeding heart here. And then in the, uh, it's almost ready to come our, our lily of the valley. Uh, this is just a small section. We have a, a, a whole huge section in the back of it. Can yep. you hold on for one second? What I want to point off is if both Jane and I stop moving right now, you can hear how quiet it is here. Yeah? Birds chirping in that. You can actually almost hear the rustling of the yeah. Now we have our music playing in the front, we do. so there was some, some... Oh, I think it's in the back, no? Well, there's a radio on or something somewhere, okay. so that is um, one aspect of... Sometimes we'll play music just for that purpose, so that we'll, it'll force us to sit still and listen and relax a little bit. Uh, but yeah, in this hallway... Yeah. And you can barely hear the uh, cars going by. Oh, I'm sorry. What what were you saying? A sweeping view of everything. Okay. Um, back here, uh, the one extraordinary thing that we have, we may have pointed this out last week as it was opening, is our one white meliagris, Fritillaria meliagris, guinea hen flower, and it's hovering right over there. Oh, I see. I, and I was then focusing in the on all the, uh, all the flocks. The That's flocks. the moss flocks. Great. And then we'll turn around to the, oh, uh, you want to go this way? Sure. Um, there's another bleeding heart. And it, this garden, actually, we have another short chair back here like we do in our meditation space. And when you sit in this chair back here and you look over here with all these uh, fritillarias and the bleeding heart and the um, 
Pulmonaria. It really looks like a little fairy garden. It's really cool. All right, cool. All right, and then... Um, Ooh, Keeler Gardens is live. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't know if you can see back there. So those are that same Fritillaria, um, but they're either just coming or just going. Uh, and so but, can you can you see how they're they're losing color? Mm -hmm. So we let these go to seed and to see what happens. They start out lower and then they bloom and then as they fade, they fade in color and then they'll go to seed. Did you see?